Mapping phase. All right, so the first thing we need to do is turn off this wire frame. And I'm going to get two really important maps out. In my humble opinion, these are the most important maps because it, you, they allow you to texturize it a little bit later on. Um, so if we look at bones, bones have a certain texture to them. And I can paint that texture here or I can paint the texture somewhere else. But just know that there is uh, two very important normal maps. One is like the overall change. It's the, the harsh deformations. And then if you wanted surface, let's say you wanted to make a gold skull. Okay, what then? It wouldn't have any surface. What about later on? You wanted to use this skull and made, maybe make um, Oh, something like rust or something like a wooden skull. You wouldn't want the surface just yet. You would want the underlying. That way it would have multiple uses down the road. That's why I always found, especially with objects that like, like the skull. So I'm going to show you how to combine normal maps together so that this thing could grow with things that you're going to use it with. All right. Without further ado, let's go in here to um, Extract Texture Maps, New Operation. I'm going to export the Ambient Occlusion Map, and I'm going to export the Normal Map. Okay. And what I'll do here is I'm going to uh, go to Target Models, and my target model here is the cube retopo 2. Yours could be one, it could be two. Just make sure it turns yellow and you should be good to go. Uh, for the low resolu resolution, I'm going to add selected. It's going to choose to zero. And I'll go over here to add selected. It's going to choose level five. Now, I'm going to be using the subdivision as a way to do this. 2048. And if you wanted, you can even go a little higher, but um, people that, especially my online students, please don't do that um, because y you wouldn't be able to get me those files. They're like 50 megs each. Well, we made 38 megs or something like that. They're huge. So let's go 2048 for this. I do like the anti-alias, and I will be using tangent space and going texture type and then using the file base. So here, I just want to establish a good place where I have everything else. And I'm going to drop this down, and I like using the 16-bit floating point for this. And you can even choose 32 if you wanted to. And I let's do that, and I'll show you how to convert it. I think that would be good for you. So 32-bit floating point. And we'll call this um, skull NM for normal map. Save that out. Now for the ambient occlusion map, I have to set that up. Normal. Notice it's mainly set up already. Um, the only thing I need to do is name the map. For this one, I don't need 32-bit. I can go to uh, TIFF 8-bit for this. Normally I'd go TIFF, and then if I have a target, like let's say the UDK, I worry about the conversion at Photoshop level. So this is skull underscore OCC for ambient occlusion. Alright, sweet. Now we have it. Now the shadow map resolution, if you had the time, I would say bump it to 2048. And when it quality, you can go best. This is going to take a while, so what I'm going to do is kind of stop this video here, and I'll just ditch two videos together. Alright, so see you in the next video. Hit extract.
All right, now that it's been extracted fully, uh, we're going to be looking at the outcome of it. So I got my normal map and my skull OCC TIFF. If if you look at it, um, let's uncheck this box. There we go, and check it back. Uh, you can see all the detail, and the ambient occlusion kind of just strengthens that detail with the black. Very, very nice. Now, let's go look at the folder that this exported into. Um, if we go to Dropbox, uh, work in progress, skull, here's my normal map and OCC map. Good. Alright, so the next thing I want to do in uh, the next video is, is go through the conversion and the addition of additional things like, let's say, surface noise for this. How, how do we dictate that surface noise? How do we add another normal map just in case you need it, okay? In most cases, this would be pretty good. I, I like this, but again, um, I want to plan for the future and show you how to do that. I think it's very important. So we're going to go a little bit nuts and say, hey, what if the skull was made out of, let's say, uh, a rust or a steel, okay? What happens then? So let's go on to the next video where we can look at that process.